Now for our story. This morning in his room at the Brown Palace Hotel in Wakefield, Nicholas Dorn sat by the window which faced the square. From where he sat, Nicholas could look across to Ben Calvert's real estate and loan office. And on the other side, a corner of David Bowman's bank was visible. Then there was the building in which Angus McKillop, Bill Mead's attorney, had his office. Landmarks. The people whose lives had indirectly affected his own. But Nicholas was not looking out of the window. He held an early edition of a Chicago paper in his hand, and now for the tenth time he reread an item there. The custody suit of ex-Sergeant Bill Mead and his divorced wife, Kit Calvert, daughter of a prominent Wakefield businessman, came to a sensational conclusion yesterday with the revelation that the child in question had been taken from Lisa Fenner, the well-known Fenner dancing team shortly after the child's birth in California. Miss Peggy Douglas, whose testimony was... Oh, what's the matter with me? I've read this thing over till I know it by heart. Besides, what difference does it make, actually? I know that... Hello. Good morning, Nicholas. Oh, Aunt Mary, are you... I'm downstairs in the lobby. Right oh. I'll be right down, Aunt Mary. Hello, Aunt Mary. Swell of you to come by. Why, Nicholas? You said you wanted to see me. Yeah. You uh, seen the out-of-town papers yet? No, but I can imagine only too well what they're saying. Yes, I'd be bound to pick up an item like that. How's Peggy? All right, Nicholas. You didn't tell her you were coming to see me, did you? No. Good. You know, the, this trial, all the ramifications. If you tried to sell a story like that to a Hollywood producer, he'd say you were crazy. Too far-fetched. And yet you come to a nice, quiet little town like Wakefield. And... I know. It does seem too bad that things like that can happen. But it's as Randy and I were saying the other night. The people are selfish, inconsiderate of others. Well. Yeah. I've been thinking about Bill. Wondering how he's taking it. You see him yet, Aunt Mary? I talked to him for a minute or two yesterday, just afterward. Yeah, it must have been an awful shock to the guy. Yes, indeed it was. But of course, he's glad the baby's going to be with its own mother and father. You know, Aunt Mary, I like Bill. Got a lot of respect for him. Yes, I know you have, Nicholas. During these past months, I've admired both you and Bill, your attitude toward each other. Well, I'll admit there have been times these last few months when I wish you'd take a long trip or something. <laughs> well, I don't feel that way anymore. Now I sincerely wish him all the best. I'm sure you do. Somehow, I have a hunch things are going to look up for him from now on. I mean, his personal life. Well, Nicholas, I don't know about that. It's hard to say what will happen. There's so many factors to be considered. I've been thinking about that, too. Thinking about Peggy. Oh, uh, by the way, Nicholas, Peggy said something about having dinner with you tonight. She did? Weren't you expecting to? Well, you see, Aunt Mary, I won't be here. Oh? I'm leaving tonight. I'm a scram. Checking out. That's why I asked you to stop by. I wanted to explain. I see. Somehow, I, I think you know why. And I imagine you're not absolutely flabbergasted either. Oh, Nicholas, I suppose in a way I saw this coming. Yes, I, I felt that you did. But I did want to explain how I feel just the same. I hadn't forgotten the talk we had months ago when Peggy and I... Well, when it first began to dawn on me that I was in love with her. You tried to warn me then, Aunt Mary. You suggested that I might be getting beyond my depth, but... I uh, don't know it all dawn. I went plunging right ahead. Now I realize what a mistake it was. So that's why I decided to go back to Hollywood. You haven't mentioned this to Peggy? No. No, I haven't. She's tried so hard to be loyal to her promise to me. I'm not going to let her do it. Now that Bill's free. But, Nicholas, the most important thing is you and Peggy. How you two feel toward each other. I agree with you. And I, I believe I understand how Peggy feels. How she's felt all along. This baby... When Peggy thought it was Bill's child, it had a tremendous effect on Peggy psychologically. 
I know that otherwise she never would have considered marrying me. It wasn't just the fact that the child was Kit's, or rather that we all thought it was. No, but... Uh, Look, the way I dope it out, Peggy was thinking ahead. Thinking of all the possible pitfalls which she and Bill might have fallen into if they'd married. Whether the child had been awarded to Bill or to Kit. All of them in one little town. The Calverts influencing a child. You know what they do, teach him to resent Peggy. She told me once she felt that that might eventually be responsible for a rift between Bill and his son. That's true that Peggy would have been in a very difficult position. And Kit has always tried to. to... Yeah, I, I know Kit. Can't say I blame Peggy for wanting to avoid any connection with her. <laughs> I'm a little afraid of her myself. Any event, Aunt Mary... That's the way I see it. The background, I mean. Now, the whole picture's changed. The baby isn't an issue. Bill's free. There's nothing to stand between those two. Except me. And in another couple of hours, I'll be chugging along on the train back to where I belong. Well, Nicholas, as to where you belong, that's something we must all to decide for ourselves. But it seems to me you fit into our lives here very easily. I've always perhaps, perhaps under different circumstances, I might have stayed. But I'm not the stuff of which martyrs are made, Aunt Mary. I'm leaving partly for selfish reasons, you see. Selfish reasons? Yes. I haven't the slightest desire to... Well, to suffer in this world any more than necessary. If Peggy and I went ahead with our wedding plans now, and... I'm very much afraid we'd both be unhappy. She'd be trying not to show it, of course. And I'd be trying not to show that I knew she was unhappy. And it would be another vicious circle. And that's no good. No. No, certainly isn't. This way, I'll do a quick disappearing act. She and Bill will make fine music together, and that will do that. Perhaps, Nicholas. One can't be absolutely sure where human emotions are concerned. Well, I hope she'll be happy. I hope so terribly. And you watch, for once in my life, I think I'm doing the best thing for all concerned. And Mary, I've written her this letter explaining how I feel as best I can. Will you give it to her for me? And if it doesn't make my position clear, will you try to tell her how I feel? Please? Yes, of course I will, Nicholas. And uh, I want to tell you this, Aunt Mary, I... I don't regret one instant of this experience. Not one. Meeting all of you, Lefty and Randy and Bill, all of you wonderful people. You've really given me a new perspective. You are glad, Nicholas. You know we're all fond of you, don't you? Yes, I, I think you are. Oh, Nicholas, I, I'm so sorry about this. Why? I haven't any regrets. Nevertheless, I know... You love Peggy. But, Nicholas, you'll find the complete thing someday. Your real happiness. Well, I, I don't know about that, Aunt Mary. But at least I know what the possibilities are now. When I came here, I had a lot of half-baked, cynical ideas about love. I was afraid of it. And the joke was, I, I, I didn't even know what the word meant. I do now. Thanks to your lovely little niece. It's a lesson I, I'll never forget. And so Nicholas Dorn had made his decision. But I wonder if Bill and Peggy, shattered as they both are by the experiences they have gone through in recent months, will be able to find their way back to the carefree, joyous relationship they once had.